Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be starting episode 5 in our series, The Catacombs, and where we do deep dives in the specific detour edits and tutorials. And today's topic is going to be picking up from where we left off. Um, in last video, uh, we're going to be adding a new monster that we've created into our custom level. Um, and in a future video, we'll be turning that into an NPC and changing models and textures and stuff um, so you can make it look exactly how you want. Um, so if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know the drill. And with that out of the way, let's get rolling. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we did, um, if you didn't catch our last video, we made like a custom Forgotten Tower clone series um, of levels that you can access from Act 5, uh, just from a building in town. Um, so we made some new warps and stuff for that, but now we want to fill out that um, kind of loading area a little bit, and we're going to add like an NPC, if you will. Um, so because it's the tower from Act 1 um, that we're trying to edit, we're going to go into our data global folder, tiles, Act 1, outdoors, and we're going to go ahead and grab out what we need there. Um, you'll see I've already, you know, pre-made these folders, um, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, clean those out for you, do it like you guys would. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and grab out our legacy map file again, this DS1. Um, and as a quick reminder, if you did not see the last video, we need to make sure we have a zeroed out uh, size, zero kilobytes. So we need to make sure we have a zeroed out combined underscore DS1.bin in every act that you're going to have um, custom map files in. Um, so for us, we had to edit a map in Act 5 to uh, put our custom warp in, and now we're going to be editing a map in Act 1 so that we can add our new um, monster into. Uh, so we want a bin in both files, um, so just a quick heads up on that. Um, but with that, we've uh, got the map file we need. Uh, now let's go ahead and grab the text files that we're going to need. Um, so as usual, data global Excel for those. And um, we're going to be doing three text edits today. Uh, it's going to be monpreset.txt. This is going to be the file that we use um, to edit or uh, get the monster ready to be placed in a map so the map understands it, basically. Um, and then monstats.txt. So we're going to just replace all these. And monstats2.txt. Um, monstats2.txt is not strictly needed, um, but I always recommend Sorry about that. I always recommend creating one with your monster because uh, it does give you some more control over uh, visual aspects and things like that um, when you uh, associate it with a, a Monstats file, a Monstats 2 file, sorry. Um, but with that, uh, those are the three text files we need. Um, now, because we're going to be creating uh, a new monster, we need to add a new reference. Um, so as you might remember from the kind of reference tutorials, um, we need to go to HD character, and there's going to be a monsters.json file. Um, so this is going to tell the game what JSON file to use, and therefore what visual to apply to our monster. Our monster. Can't talk, uh, so we'll need that. Uh, and then we'll also want the string, just so we can name it real quick. Uh, so we'll go to data local language strings, and we're going to grab up monsters.json from there as well. Um, obviously, make sure you don't get those mixed up and they go in the right area, um, but we'll be editing both of those. So let's get those out of the way just real quick. Um, so monsters.json, this is going to be the uh, kind of key we uh, give it, um, the, the name and all that. So we're just going to copy something. Um, we're going to give it a high ID, like uh, let's say 60,000, um, just something that uh, we haven't used yet, um, but that's higher than what they uh, Blizzard has already used, and we're going to go ahead and put the key as NPC demo. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use that later in our text edits, and then we're just going to call this the demo NPC. Um, I'm very creative, as you can tell, so that will be the name of our NPC as we see it in game. Uh, so that's all we need there. We're going to go ahead and save out of that and close it, and then let's go ahead and do our quick um, uh, monster or other monsters.json edit. So this is going to be for the visuals. Um, and all that we're going to do here is just uh, put a comma, go to a new line. This is going to be the name of the monster. So we're just going to call everything NPC demo for now. Um, and then the file that we want it to use, um, I thought we'd do something neat and make like a dark wanderer. Um, so we're going to use the dark wanderer uh, JSON file um, for the visuals. 
Uh, again, in a later video, we're going to customize that with new textures and models so you can tweak it. Um, but uh, for now, we're just giving it a, a basic visual. And then we're going to turn that into an NPC uh, with full on dialogue and stuff uh, in a future video. Um, so we've made our JSON uh, edits. Now we're just ready to basically uh, do our actual map edit as well as our couple of texts. Um, so we'll start with our map edit. Uh, so actually, let's start with our text edits. We'll go to Data Global Excel, and we'll start with monpreset.txt. Um, so we do have just a little bit of homework on this file, um, in my opinion, just to make it easier for you in the future. Um, so uh, these all link to the kind of map editor that you're going to be using, um, and they all have IDs associated with them. Um, but as you can see, there's not really IDs. It just lists the act it's in. Um, so what I find very helpful um, is to just select this whole column, and we're going to go ahead and just add a column at the end. Now, for this very first entry, it's important that we put an asterisk here um, so that the game knows not to read this entire column, that it's just used for note-taking purposes. And then we're going to name it DS1 ID number, um, just because, again, it's, it basically controls, um, you know, how that all links together. Um, so... Uh, we'll just name that, and then as far as IDing everything, this is only going to take uh, 30 seconds or so um, if you're using AFJ or something similar. Um, so we're going to go to the first Act 1 entry and put a zero in this column. And then with that selected, we're going to go all the way to the last Act 1 entry, highlight them all, and then select the increment fill option. So it's going to fill in all those IDs. And then we're going to rinse and repeat for all five acts. So a zero for the very first Act 2 entry, and then we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom, um, and then fill in everything with that function, and then just keep doing this until you get to the end. should only take you, again, 30 seconds, a minute, something like that, um, if you're doing it this way, um, but it'll help you a lot in the future uh, as you go to add these monsters um, to know exactly what uh, they're doing. So just making sure I have everything correct so far looks good. All right, so we've added in all our IDs for Blizzard, um, basically. Um, now what we want to do is, again, we're placing it in a, even though it's going to be technically considered Act 5 when we go to make the map, um, it is going to be uh, an Act 1 DS1 that it's kind of pulling from. So we're going to put it in this Act 1 section here um, by just selecting the very first Act 2 entry, and then we're going to go ahead and select Insert Row. And that'll insert it right above. And now we can put in Act 1. We're going to go ahead and again just name it NPC Demo. And we're going to give it the next ID in the sequence, which is 47. So just remember that number 47. We're going to use that in just a minute or so here. Um, but we're all done with this file now that we've kind of uh, played housekeeping. Um, we're ready to save. Uh, now we're ready to create the actual monster. Um, so to do that, we're just going to, uh, as you might guess from the JSON edit we made, we're just going to copy the Dark Wanderer. Um, I thought this would make a cool NPC, and it's not really used much, um, you know, normally in the game, obviously. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and basically clone it and then repurpose it for our own uses. So I'm going to go ahead and update the ID. And then for all of these different kind of fields, uh, ID, base ID, name string, monstat CX, uh, for all of these, we're just going to name it NPC Demo. Um, obviously, you can name things however you want, as long as you can remember, um, you know, which references you use for what. Uh, but for my own sanity, I'm just going to name them all the same. Um, in this Monstax EX column, this is that Monstax 2 reference. So um, this is what we're going to use for the name on the Monstax 2 file as well. Um, and the only other change we're going to make in this video is going to be for the AI. Um, so instead of it using the Dark Wanderer AI, which is fine, it will work, um, he's just going to basically stand there doing nothing. Um, so instead, we'll just change it to like an NPC AI, and that way he'll move around and kind of look at you and things like that. Uh, we're not going to bother messing with like stat skills, all that stuff. Um, you know, just a demo purpose, obviously. Uh, you know, make the edits you want and uh, use the Blizzard data guide if you uh, aren't sure what a column does. Um, and then we're going to do the exact same process we just did, uh, but for the uh, monstats two dot text. And um, this one, we're not changing anything but the kind of entry name. And again, this is for your own benefit kind of later. Whoops. Um, 
and if you see demo, uh, that if you want to add special uh, item visuals or um, change treasure class states, things like that, um, you might want to um, have, uh, so again, you have different transfigures, you can um, assign different settings to them, change their, what equipment they wear. Anyways, if you want to mess with that stuff, I recommend having this Monstats 2 entry, but that's all we're doing. Um, so that's it. We're, our monster's created, it's assigned, so that it can now be uh, basically seen with the map editor, um, and we're, we're ready to go on that. Um, so all I want to do now is just get the map editor ready. This uh, step is completely optional, but we're going to go into the data folder of the map editor, and we're going to open up this obj.txt, uh, not to be confused with the obj.txt that, uh, you know, is part of Resurrected. This is going to be its kind of own uh, file, but this is what it uses to help name and display the things in the editor. So as you can see here, I've just named it NPC Demo already. Um, it would normally be just like this, um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It will work. But when you're in the editor, you won't see the name. Um, so, you know, three months down the road, you might wonder, what the heck is, you know, ID 47? Um, so this is just for our own purposes. We're going to name it NPC Demo. If you want to give it a visual and stuff, you can uh, pull the token and everything it uses, which I believe is like 1Z for the NPC Demo and stuff. So you can fill that in, but again, we're just not going to bother. It's just for our own sanity. We're, we're doing the name. Um, so with that, uh, we don't need to actually do anything there, um, but we are going to use our first, first tool, um, you know, that you may not be familiar with. We did use it in the last video, uh, but that's going to be WinDS1 Edit. Um, so again, a big shout out to Paul Cerami, his website, his tool um, for doing all this. He has excellent guides that I strongly recommend checking out. Um, just very thorough and does a better job I ever will of explaining it all. Um, and don't forget to uh, stay tuned for the next video where we uh, go into Detour Mopa and how to change textures on models. Uh, that'll be coming up right after um, so we can make this NPC look like what we want. Uh, but anyways, I recommend downloading the complete version um, that has everything you need included, um, and we're just going to run with that. So um, the first thing to do with that is open up the loader that's included inside there. Um, so we're going to open that up, and we're going to add our tower DS1 we extracted near the beginning of the video. And again, this is our legacy map we're going to edit. So we're just going to open that, select it from the list, and select Rotten. Once that's loaded, we're just going to zoom in using the mouse wheel. You can see some of the warp columns we added in the previous video to go back to town and further down into the sublevels. Again, if you haven't checked it out and you're curious, uh, links in the video description below. Um, but uh, what we want to do is, uh, like I said, add a monster. Um, and you can see in the bottom right that we're currently on the tiles mode. Um, and that's why we've got this big green box. So I want to select tab to switch modes. And now I want to be in the objects mode. Um, the objects mode is where we're going to actually add our, our unit. Um, so I'm just going to select somewhere here. Seems good. I'm going to hit the insert key. And that's going to bring up our unit selection um, dialog. Uh, so when I right click this name, it's always going to default to Geed because uh, he's ID 0. Um, I can now scroll down and we should see our ID 47 that we set in monpreset.txt. Um, we can now see it come up here and again as the MPC demo. So all I need to do is just select it that yes, we're, pl we're placing uh, the ID 47 kind of object or monster down and then I'm going to save that. So that's the only change we're making in this particular thing um, to add the monster. Um, so we've now done everything we've need. We, uh, we, we've added our string reference so uh, the name will appear in the game. We've added our visual reference so it will look like the Wanderer. We've added all the text files we need to kind of display everything. Um, and we've double checked that we have our uh, bin file here to kind of bypass the, the backup, if you will. Um, so with all that said, um, when we go and start the mod, we should be um, looking good here. And uh, you guys will understand a lot more about how to kind of integrate um, your monster edits into the levels and get it going how you want. And as I said, we're going to go into kind of textures on modeling in the next video. So if you want to customize it further, stay tuned. And for you guys who did not see the last video, you can see the new warp location now. So 
So we took this kind of unused area by the uh, the bridge entrance here, and now you can go inside the building um, and go through the uh, tunnel there. And now you can see there's our MPC um, that we just created. Everything's linked up properly, um, and he's placed in the map. So uh, you can turn this into, like I mentioned earlier, a full-fledged MPC where you go to talk to him, and he can give you dialogue and gossip with you and all that. Um, but uh, for now, we just wanted to show you how to place it, how to get everything going, um, and stay tuned. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed the content, found it all useful, and thanks for sticking around to the end. Take care and have a great day. Bye.